This is episode two of my bricking my new Cessna 150 back from Colorado, 704 Golf Charlie. I flew out on Thursday, March 10th. I took possession of the airplane Friday, March 11th. Working plan right now is to end up in Hutchinson, Kansas tonight. We couldn't get a hold of the FBO to get the airplane towed from his hangar over to the fuel pumps. I was already kind of annoyed with the seller because he had charged me more than he had estimated for some of the stuff that I wanted done on the airplane. And so I just said, well, we'll just taxi it. And he said, well, you can't start it. I said, why not? Well, it's below 40 degrees Fahrenheit. I said, yeah, well, you can't start a piston engine below 40 degrees, which is, but I didn't know that at the time. And I looked at him, I said, you knew I was planning to come out here this week, this day on the, with this temperature forecast. And you knew that, and so you just let me do that without mentioning that, oh, well, you can't start that. I think he realized he had sold me the airplane for less than he probably could have gotten it, and he was just being a d I pulled the airplane about halfway across the field by hand. The FBO got somebody freed up. They got over there, they towed it the rest of the way. The FBO was happy to do engine preheats for free, which of course the seller didn't mention to me. So I finally get the airplane over there. I have run it. I have checked it for leaks. I have taxied it. I have filled it up with fuel. It's 2.30 in the afternoon and I am so angry with the seller. Setting out on a long cross country trip that late in the afternoon, even though the weather was nice, was just not a good plan. I talked to the FBO. I tied the airplane down on the flight line, got my luggage out. I got an Uber, first time I've used Uber. Went to this lovely hotel. I stayed in the hotel two nights because Saturday, March 12th, the weather was gonna be uh, yucky and gusty and just didn't want to do the first flight in the plane. In those kind of conditions. I just noticed something absolutely hilarious and cool about this wallpaper, but it has Easter eggs, which are not repeated. So there's a poodle with sunglasses. There's a chicken in the bathroom. You can see there's an astronaut, there's a giraffe, there's a high wheel cycle, there's a dinosaur drinking a, or drinking a coffee, hot air balloon. That's hilarious. There's this just suction of the center of the country that's all churned up. Is low level wind shear. That's what I'm kind of stuck behind and need to sort of avoid. get to the airport on Sunday, March 13th. The weather is cold and wonderful and perfect. Perfect for a first takeoff, almost no wind. I am not going to film my first flight in 704 Golf Charlie. I just, I got too much on my mind. So here is my setup. As a lowland pilot, I cannot tell you how weird it is to be sitting in an airplane on the ground, but with the altimeter at almost 5,000 feet. Here I taxi off the ramp and taxi out for a south going takeoff. Take a very quick screenshot before I take off. The magenta line shows that I am hoping that ATC will let me go southeast through the Bravo over the top of Denver International. Here's my takeoff path as I climb out. I recorded all these radar traces from flightaware.com who has given me very gracious permission to use this footage in this series of videos. Please check them out on the web. I talked to Denver Approach somewhere around here, but they just said, yeah, you can go around. I'm flying this weird curved path to stay below and out of the Denver Bravo airspace, which I'll show you in a little bit here. There is Denver International. There is the spaceport that, I, that I'm going to. The blue circular lines on this diagram show the edges of the airspace that I was staying around and below. My first fuel up in this airplane, I fill up at the self-service pumps, check the oil, and just make sure everything's okay for the next longer leg. I usually find that fuel hose retractor drums are terrible and hard to deal with. This one was awesome. Just before I head out, I grabbed a screenshot with the, 
the departing traffic on the ADSB display, which is pretty cool. And here I must have had a nice steady climb established because I took another screenshot showing the traffic around me, including the traffic that had just taken off behind me. Here was somebody on ADSB that I think ATC told me about. I had a fair tailwind. I was going 120 knots over the ground. Engine gauges in cruise, and over on the left you can see the system voltage in blue. Here ADSB alerted me about somebody that ATC did not see, uh, but I went around them. And I saw them out the window later. Anyway, I dropped down lower because I wanted to make sure I was below the clouds. And so at this point, they lost me on the radar, so I just canceled service and then just flew to Goodland. Tucked away in a hangar for at least one night. The courtesy car at the Goodland Airport, which I was very, very grateful for, had a cassette deck, which is awesome, and a temperature gauge that was pinned below the peg, which is hilarious. Relaxing with some dinner and a YouTube video. In the evening of March 13th, I can see that the weather is moving in behind me from the west. So I was delayed on March 14th. This is the morning. There is icing, there is turbulence, there is low-level wind shear. I'm not going flying in that. Monday evening, I'm looking here at the rest of my route, which is looking okay. Looking at my destination, I'm going to have to wait for weather to move out anyway, but we should be able to get pretty far in the next day or two. They are burning grass near the runway, and so he just came out to let me know that, one, the airport's not closed, two, nothing's, you know, the fire is nothing to be alarmed about. I'm waiting for the sun to do its job and warm up the engine. I have done a couple of chores. I now have my seatbelt adjusted so that it sits in the middle other than sitting way over here, because you have to sort of unbuckle this buckle and sort of futz around with it. I spent the time to figure out how to mount my iPad underneath the yoke so that it sits properly at, well, it's only eight. I'm, it's, the wind gets gusty at noon. I'm hoping to be well out of here well before then. Um, everything down the road should be fine all day. I just test check the engine with an infrared thermometer it is up to 35, so we're getting real close. About a quarter to nine, I should be able to leave within an hour. I hadn't done my research, so I was still avoiding running below 40 degrees. Taxiing out, back taxiing, and then taking off on runway 23 to the southwest. I continued southwest a ways past the airport so that I wasn't turning east directly over the town. Here is a photo I took as I made the turn going east over the highway. You can see the burning back at the airport. Heading east, I was talking to flight following. Somewhere along here I talked to air traffic control. Some pilot who was coming in was confused about the notums about burning, and so I passed along what they had told me on the ground, which was that yes, there's burning, but just call on the CTAF and they'll make sure the runway that you're going to land on is clear. So that was super helpful for them. Apparently on this flight, it didn't have a read of my VFR flight plan, so it just is giving coordinates. That's kind of following the roads here. Flying east on Tuesday, March 15th, I'm thinking I may not be able to get home tomorrow, Wednesday, because of weather. Neither FlightAware nor my iPad caught my arrival at Blosser Municipal, but I landed to the north. I accidentally went up to the fuel station at the northwest, thinking that was the gas pumps. It wasn't, so I had to then taxi down to the south. But I got gas, took off to the north, and turned immediately east to avoid going over the town, and headed off to Chillicothe. One interesting note, Bloster is between two magenta boxes on this map. Those are military operations areas, but both only go down to 7,000 feet, and I was flying at 5,500, so it didn't matter. And here, crossing from Kansas to Missouri, I'm going to stay the night in Chillicothe, which has an FBO that has a courtesy car, which is super fantastic. 
I also realized that since I'm back in the Midwest now, they probably have Casey's, and which has pizza even late into the evening. They did, and I had some. Oh, yes. I landed in Chillicothe, parked the airplane, had it, got it filled up with fuel, and borrowed the courtesy car to go for the ho to the hotel for the night. So, early in the morning of March 16th, Wednesday, I did some digging online and found this document by Continental. Talking, It talks about cold weather starting and particularly in the range from 20 to 40 degrees Fahrenheit. And it basically just says, start the engine, warm it up slowly, don't be stupid. This is not engineering or legal advice. Please consult your flight instructor, your A&P, or Continental engines yourself. Wednesday, March 16th, my first leg is from north central Missouri to eastern central Illinois. It was really cold this Wednesday morning, down at freezing. I had the devil of a time getting it started. But I did finally get it started. <laughs> and took off to the south. Again with a nice tailwind that day. Dropped down to 5500 probably for clouds again. Now down to 3500. I landed on 22 and taxied in. The second leg of the day after my meeting. I climbed up to 7,500 really late in this flight. I wish I'd done it earlier because it would have been a lot smoother. Okay, I lied. There is a little bit of flight footage in part two. Here's a view of the Ohio River just before I cross it. That is a wind triangle, apparently. I have seen them described in FAA manuals and stuff, but I've never seen one in the flesh. This is at Bowman Field in uh, Louisville, Kentucky. And that's freaking huge. That's bigger than an airplane. But that means you can see it. I see that it's got lights on it. Maybe blue on the top, maybe red on the left, maybe green on the right. But, like, you could actually see that from probably several miles away, which I'm sure is the point. I have never seen one in the flesh. That is super cool. There's the FBO. An absolutely magnificent old school, like, terminal building thing, Bowman Field. Central American Airways. I wonder if that's a current sign or anyway. This is this is my home for hopefully just tonight. The rest of the video is a cockpit tour. 
Flying resumes in the next video as I fly from Louisville to Knoxville, Tennessee. Standard issue, terrible GA fuel cages. The flight instruments work really, really well. The directional gyro is fantastic. It is the most stable um, physical directional gyro I think I've flown behind. In a two hour flight, I will touch it three times. Attitude indicator is fantastic. It's very consistent, it erects quickly. Uh, clock is super consistent, as you can see. Altimeter uh, is great, never had any complaints. Oil temperature and oil pressure seem to act consistently. Radio is fine, transponder is fine. Tachometer reads at 130 low, which means you have to be really careful to watch uh, over speeding, especially with this climb prop when you level out in uh, cruise. The optical tack serves as a very nice backup. Putting the Stratus up here works fine. I put this as my USB source in my voltmeter. It works great as a USB source. Um, you know, this, this USB source works great for the Stratus up there, but it is just, it's impossible to see. In the future, I'm going to have to relocate it somewhere else. They're brand new seatbelts. They've got like liquid tags and stuff. I now have them adjusted to me so that it sits in the center of my body. And it's, I've just adjusted this one just after landing here so that it's, it's up here and it's not hitting me in the back of the head. I can tighten this down. And it genuinely uh, keeps me in my seat. That is the state of things with 704 Golf Charlie. This was one, two, three, four, five, six legs of flying at home. Seventh leg hopefully will be tomorrow and then I can go home. Now I need to go hotel it and get some work done and get prepped for tomorrow. Thanks for following along.